You expect a soldier to be stopping people getting hurt. We weren't, we were cleaning up people that had already been hurt. I felt disconnected from my own family. We sacrifice a little bit of who we are for the job we do. All the impacts inside of me. I had a jaw broke in four places and my palate collapsed. Wow. I didn't realise how badly I'd been hurt. And I could feel my legs getting really hot and it was where the blood was was running onto my legs. I just ripped my own body armor off and climbed out. A lot of people didn't think I'd make it. So all they'd heard is Sunray 24 Alpha, headshot. I felt cheated and all I could think about was everything I'd lost. 25 operations, 140 hours of surgery. That's what I thought my future held for me. All of a sudden I went from being a victim to a survivor. I didn't control that. And if I didn't control it, then it wasn't my fault. They'd get up or give up. You haven't got a single drop of self-pity in you, have you? You can't enjoy life sitting on the sideline. You know, you got to be on the pitch. And even out there in the military, you've done what you were asked to do. You've done it in a professional manner. Be proud of who you are. My guest today on the debrief. He's had quite a life. He joined the army in his father's footsteps. And I'm going to find out all about how it went right now. Simon, how are you, buddy? You I'm all right, right, mate. Yeah, good, thank you. You good? Yeah, good. Had a good trip down? Yeah, dead easy. Like, so I was in London yesterday, so that, I've been at New Elizabeth Line for the first time. It's quite, quite It's nice, all right, isn't it? It's clean, isn't it? It's tidy. Easy to well, get. It opens up a bit for you, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, it's clean and tidy, but, you know, it's only been open a year. <laughs> it's got time, mate. It's got time. <laughs> Listen... <laughs> Let's go right back, way back when, to a small Simon before you joined the army and that. Because I like I like to the start there; it gives me a start point. Let's tell me a little bit about your childhood. Uh, yes, I grew up um, council state, South Leeds. Um, you know, I had great parents. Let's say my dad worked for us; he was area. So, okay. Uh, yeah, but um, and yeah, you know, so we we got instilled into us that discipline and that that he he brought out of the yeah. military himself. And um, yeah, I mean, when I grew up that time, there, there wasn't a lot going on. You know, the mills and mines had shut and. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Know, tough, tough, tough on the estates up there. Yeah, and and, and kind of, um, I think I think there was always an inkling that I fancied that forces route. Yeah. Uh, you know, from eleven, twelve years old, <laughs> I applied for the navy and they didn't want me. What about uh, school? <laughs> school, yeah. Again, I. Good I got, at school. I, I've been chatting to someone about this recently. Actually, it, it, it's fresh in my mind. It, I was one of these people. I think because my dad left the military and went back. Although he went back to his hometown, we didn't have family there. Right. Okay. So well, I was always a little bit of an outsider because. We didn't have that ready-made friends group. Right, okay. So, yeah, so, obviously I made friends through rug yeah. rugby and football and stuff, but, yeah, I was always a little bit of an outsider and always a little bit sort of de detached from everyone else because we weren't part of that sort of family unit, especially, you know, rough council estates. Yeah, you know. but you need, you need a few friends in the yeah, bus, yeah. don't you? And, and they're all related, you know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I, and, and that was the thing. So we were always a little bit de de detracted. So that's why I always thought I wanted a job that wasn't, you know, working for someone's dad or doing that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I always wanted something that, that would get me out of where I was. Sports not, wise, not, out and about sort of like person. Did you do sports? You mentioned football yeah, and rugby there. Were yeah, you? yeah. Like I say, I was never, never like the most gifted athlete, but <laughs> Same I, I like, I like getting stuck in. You know what I mean? And and you know, Leeds United fan. Again, I follow, I, I follow football because I, I grew up like three mile from ground. Right. Okay. But I'm a rugby man. Okay. You know, I'm at my arts in rugby. Yeah, but yeah. League or union? I'm a league man. Right, uh, okay. But but obviously being in the military, you play both codes. Yeah, you? yeah, 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 yeah. Of uh, course. And 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 again, you know, you put me down with sports channel. I watch out. You know what I mean? It's I I just I just I just love sport. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I'm exactly the same. So, when did you first get any a sort of like England that you were definitely going to go and join the army? As I said, at 16, I went and I went and joined. I went to the careers office in Leeds to, to look at joining the navy. I wanted to be an okay. artificer down. I go down to Dartmouth and study okay. there. Um, they said I didn't have the right aptitude for military, so I thought, oh, fair enough. So I went away and uh, tried to improve some of the some of the GCSEs that I got, um, okay. and then kind of got stuck doing some engineering jobs that were not not particularly fun. I wasn't getting paid right well, and and then my dad gave me a kick up the backside again when I was eighteen, saying, "Look, what, what are you going to do? Better. What are you going to do with your son?" Um, and so I went back down to the careers office and uh, sat down. I wanted to join the Royal Armoured Corps. Okay. Um, I did the the barb test and and the sergeant sat there and went look I want you to come back and do another test for me uh, so I thought oh what does this mean have I failed that I didn't yeah, understand yeah, yeah, yeah. and he made me do the engineering test um, he said I think I think I think Reem is right way for you boy and uh, yeah and then let's say next thing I know I'm 
and waiting for a phone call to go down to Perb right and do basic training. Right, okay, so you, you, you went through Perb, right? Yeah. And then you went to your phase two. Where was your phase two? I decided phase two at Borden. Okay. Yeah, um, 97. Uh, and then um, and then I went to, uh, obviously, Leckenfield doing my, my driver training. Um, yep. And then my first post, it was out to Munster and uh, with the Kings Royal Lazars LAD. Okay. Enjoy it? Fun? Yeah, well, like, like you say, you kind of you go through training and you get given all the tools and that, but you don't really know what it's like to be in the military until yeah, yeah, you, know, you yeah, go yeah. out into the big world. And and I was very lucky. I had some, you know, really good mentors. Uh, I had some, you know, decent people who sort of guided me in the right way. And you know, that had a bit of fun with it that you do when you turn up to a new. Uh, unit. I mean, Germany is quite a good place to go, isn't it? The, the social scene in Germany has got to be. I never did one, but it's got to yeah, be something else. That was there. brilliant. And like I say, yeah, I mean, you got Schengen zone, so. You had a, you know, one of you had a bang and you just jumped in car and you'd go anywhere at weekends. <laughs> it was brilliant. Um, and like I say, I was lucky enough that there was enough people there that did that, that yeah, kind yeah. of life. Um, so I got, I got to know, I got to know it quite well. And one of the things I thought about is, you know, I've worked so hard to get myself where I was in the military. The last thing I wanted to do was post it to Catrick and, and, and be five minutes from home. You yeah, know, I, of course. I, yeah. No, I, I'll, I'll get that. I'll I, totally get I, that. I wanted that, move away, go yeah. away, try something new, be, yeah. you know, you know, like like university students don't want to do a university at home, they want to go somewhere different. Now, yeah, that's what I can want to do. I want to go build my life and set myself up as a human being away from what was what was familiar to me. So what was your actual job in the Remy? You were a mechanic? I, I was a vehicle right? mechanic, okay, yeah. Okay, so a VM. Like yeah, yeah. Right? I was, well, I was a, I was streamlined Amex, so it was all heavy armour. Okay. Oh, yeah. And that was your bits and pieces. you enjoy armour? Yeah, like you say. I mean, it, the beauty of being heavy armour was, you know, you spent a lot of time actually integrate with units at LEDs okay. so you you know you didn't do the battalion stuff you, you got to actually go out there and, so a bit and, and more, earn, earn, earn your trade you yeah know I mean? a bit more of you doing what you do rather than being told what to do and all the rest of the yeah there was a, a bit more camp. independence and a bit more sort of responsibility put on your shoulders even at a young age and and, and I like that you know that, that challenge right you know I'll, so, let, I'll let you mess up but uh you'll know about it if you do so cutting <laughs> your teeth um what sort of places did you get up to what did you get up to in your first couple of years so yeah my first year um <laughs> I got, I got, I think I went to Germany in the, in the August, and I drove a Bedford at MK, up to <laughs> Poland in uh, September. Wow. So that was fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, get, but... get, getting your feet on the uh, on the dashboard to get around a roundabout. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, yeah, so Poland was my first sort of um, exercise, uh, and then we kind of came back from there. Obviously, San Lager and all that sort of lovely places. Um, and then I was, I was, we deployed to Kosovo uh, in the February. So wow, okay. year after I got there, Good so tour? terrible. Really? <laughs> well, yeah. Um, not not as in you know. Obviously, you go out there and you have an expectation of you know of what an operational tour in the military is. Yeah. And, and it wasn't that. Um, you know, it's and, a bit and of a letdown. Not that. It's just just what we were doing. You, you expect a soldier to be stopping people getting hurt. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and we weren't. We were cleaning up people that had already been hurt. Yeah. And and to me, I, I couldn't get my head around it. It. it that that was the catalyst moment for, for when I got diagnosed with PTSD because, um, yeah, because I I I just couldn't understand. I couldn't get my head around it. And don't, don't get me wrong, the, the the people around me were brilliant. You know what I mean? I had great great uh, NCOs and stuff. But and what rank were you then? I was only a, pri- a craft, well craftsman, craftsman, private okay. rank. You know what I mean? For for those who were not military. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's just a craftsman. And, and like I say, six months out there and. And you're seeing all this stuff and witnessing these things that you know you've only read about in books yeah. beforehand, and and it was the worst bit about that was coming home because you know you go home and you go on your post operational leave, and I've sat around dinner table with my mum and my family, and and and, that, and we're talking about you know my brother's in a new relationship, my other brother's expecting a kid, and you know they're looking at new careers, new houses, and I've just been in hell. Yeah, <laughs> and, you're and, sort and of like, like, what have you been up to then? Right, yeah, yeah. and he can't. You don't, you, I felt disconnected from your own family. I, I felt sort of disconnected from. Did, did they did they try to understand you, or did they sort of like, oh, here he comes? I, I didn't. No, I didn't give him a chance. Okay. I just pretended everything were all right, and they right. Got so it. He, yeah, he didn't show. You didn't no, talk yeah, about I, it. I just buried it. I think my dad deep down knew something was wrong. You know, yeah. he, he's done his time in the military. I think you do with your own kids as well, don't you? Do yeah. you know what I mean, you, you'll see those differences. Yeah, and I think my dad deep down knew something wasn't right, but um, he didn't want to challenge it. If, you know, and, and obviously after about. After about ten days, I was just desperate to get back to the unit. I was right, just desperate okay. to go back and be around, be like around my my, yeah. com- my comfort zone. Yeah, you'll be. Um, and like you're saying, and instead of sort of talking about it, I just 
packed it all up in a little box and buried it back in my head and thought I'd be fine. Yeah, it'd be right. It, yeah. Yeah, you just stay there. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know all about the old mentos in the bottle, yeah, mate. You that, know what that's I mean? it, and, and that's what you do, don't you? And that's yeah. what we did back then. We didn't talk about it. Well, it was say. almost taboo, wasn't it, back then? It was almost like, you know, if you went to go and see the WRVS woman, you were like, what's he doing? Like, yeah, you, what's you he doing to, in there? Yeah, you went to, well, I done for a bacon butty, didn't you? Yeah. You, you didn't go for a chat. That's um, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you might get a brew if you couldn't afford one of the naffy, like, wouldn't it? And that was it, like you say, and you just found that comfort zone. And I think there was a lot of people doing it. Yeah, um, and like you said, I, I, I've talked to, to a lot of people about stuff like this in the past, and it's that black humour in the military. And what people do, oh yeah, you just, you, no, it's not. It's it's a way of dealing with it. It's our coping strategy. Yeah, by by making it humorous, we stop it being real. Yeah, and if it's not real, it can't hurt us. And it, 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 yeah, it, it's it's not a healthy coping strategy, but it was. No, but a at, coping at the, strategy. At the time, it gets you over a lump, doesn't it? At the yeah. time, it's sort of like there you go, boom. So. Operational tours then, you obviously ended up in, in, in the sand pit, doing, yeah, your, doing your bits yeah, and pieces. Yeah, two, two tours of Iraq. Uh, you know, I was lucky enough to obviously, you know, I uh, carried her a couple of times, you know, training up there and, and, and all around Europe, and that was great. I did safe Syria in Oman. Any sport? Did you get any sport in your career? Uh, I just, I, it's just, just unit level. Okay. Yeah, unit LOD level. Oh, that's, the thing is, we were a busy, we were a busy army back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you didn't, you didn't get your regular Wednesday afternoon sports afternoon, did you? <laughs> <laughs> if you did, it was Egyptian PT, wasn't it? Can I go football training, Tiff? No, you, uh, you, got, you got four job cards not finished here. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, so I did what sport I could, and I enjoyed it. You know, and yeah. again, it was a great social. But um, but like I say, I had it saved Syria uh, with the RDGs, and then and then went got posted to to Fallon Boston, which got two Gs, and two thousand three went out to Iraq. Um, I managed to blag a five-week cruise beforehand. I was boat guard. Nice. So boat guard from Emden, uh, North Sea, Bay of Biscay, Mediterranean, Suez, and up the Gulf of Arabia, guarding boat with. Wow. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of a... My tour started early, but it wasn't particularly tasking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. You, 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 you were out, weren't you? You were out the traps, weren't you? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's so, important, and that, that was it, yeah. So got, obviously when I got to... Because oh, we were just disconnected slightly on the boat, obviously when we got to when we got to Q8... To one side, briefed up. Right, this is where we are now. What's going on? And then, what rank were you by now? I saw. I actually got, got off the boat and got given me Lance Corporal. Okay. Um, so yeah, it took well. That took what five and a half, six years. <laughs> uh, yeah, I might have been on off and on by then. Well, well, I, I put mine on Velcro just in case. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah. So I got I got I got my Lance Corporal there, and obviously then we went and sat in Q8 for a bit, and and because of the threat that we were getting, uh, obviously we did a lot of stuff in NBC kits. Yeah, um, you know, preparing for that sort of side of it. So you, you lost a ton of timber. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> running yeah. around, gopping as well, and absolutely gopping. Yeah. yeah, and then and then obviously we went we crossed the border. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was so surreal because obviously when you cross the border, you, all all the Iraqi troops have been moved into the into the cities, aren't they? And and the surrounding yeah. towns as you know defensive digging positions, and so you're, you're driving through the rural areas in really southern Basra, and they had no idea. You know what I mean? All the kids were waving, and so you know, this is a special day. Look, something's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, crazy. You know, um, and you like I say, all you want to do is give them water and yeah, and, and sweets and that. And, and was this more of what you expected from an operational tour? Having been your Kosovo was an absolute yeah, you know, yeah. It was to be yeah. to, to start. Like you say, we had this you know advanced to battle, and then obviously there was a conflict, and there was the, the yeah. sort of contacts and stuff, and so it's kind of yeah, but. In the early days, it, it was relatively straightforward. You thought this is just like playing set exercise on, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Play. yeah. Um, and obviously, it's just because we dominated the ground. You know, we had the obviously yeah. air advantage, and we had the thing. And then, uh, C Squadron, Scott CGs, we went, we got, we got attached to Forty Commando, uh, and we went through um, the Al Four Peninsula. Obviously, came through the back door of Basra, which, yeah, again, you know, was 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 interesting and. And all these things at the time, you're just doing it, you're just getting on with it. It's, it literally reading on, reading about it ten years later, you think, well, I was involved in that. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, we just just got on with the rest of the tour. And I think the hardest part of that was literally a politician signed a bit of paper, and we went from being a war fighting force to a peacekeeping force literally overnight. Yeah. And you know, you stood in the street corner one day, you know, dodging bullets and putting putting fire back down on the baddies, and then. You know, next day you, you stood on that corner handing out water and you know rations and yeah, which is another another one you go your head goes what? Why yeah, am I yeah, doing yeah, this? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was in helmet here yesterday and now I'm in floppy hat. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like you say, it was it was a difficult transition. And I take my hat off to to you know our leaders, our NCOs. Um, 
you know, they placed us and, and they did the best job they could to make sure that we transitioned as well as oh, they in could. Case you, you know, you do that, don't you? You're, you're, you're in a situation, you're away from home, you've got a job to do, do you know what I mean? And with the best will in the world, whatever sandwich gets given you, you get some ketchup on it and get it down your neck, in it. do you well, know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or Tabasco if you're a bit more fiery. <laughs> 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 All right, so let, 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 let's talk about, was it your, sec, your, your next tour is where you had your... Yeah, is where you ended up in in the way that it's yeah so uh, yeah so I kind of obviously I went out uh, with the infantry this time the armoured infantry uh, two lengths okay Um, yeah second operation much of a different tour well yeah because I mean it was Telic nine so and it was five and six one it four five six where it really went yeah wrong Uh, you know where the insurgency really took a hold and we were at Old State Building which was nicknamed Rock Strip yeah um. And yeah, like I say, it was just a different, different atmosphere, a different environment. It felt different. Um, you know, there was a lot more. There was animosity, but I don't think it was directly t- towards us. The animosity was that this was going on, and people just wanted to get on with their lives. Yeah, the Iraqi people just wanted to get on with their lives. Yeah, and and there was all this chaos going on around them, which they didn't really want. No, and, and, mate, you can understand that, can't you? you know yeah. I mean, I've always said, you know, you move into these places, and they look around you, and you think, actually, if I was, if I was a local here. I'd be probably getting up to some cheeky stuff myself, like because I don't want that anymore, do you? Yeah, and and like I said, what most of them just like I said, they just wanted to feed the kids. Yeah, yeah, and that, and that you're kind of looking at people, and you know, like I said they're growling at you, but they're growling at you because you're just another one of the problems. Yeah, that it wasn't that they had any animosity particularly to me. I, no, I, I no, was but part, I was just part of the part bigger of that problem, bigger picture that they've got. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, so it was, yeah, you could tell it was a different environment, and and like I say, going, out, I remember free running in two thousand three. You know, if there were a vehicle brought down, we just go out in a warrior on his own. Right, and, and, and drag it back. Yeah, obviously, two thousand six. You never went anywhere without without a QRF yeah, support. Yeah, stu- yeah, everybody stood to everybody behind the bars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, it's a very different environment. Um, you know, and it felt more hostile. Okay. Then, so talk us through when, when talk, talk us through when you got hit. You yeah, got so the sixth December two thousand six. Um, I was commanding the five one three. Um, Rank me then. Full I was screw full corporal, yeah. You yeah. got your full screw, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I... Routine? Pretty routine thing for you? Yeah, just like I say, just we'd, same as every day, you know, every other day we'd gone out. Because yeah. obviously, you know, we got to a point where we weren't sending out recovery when someone broke down. We were sending out recovery with with the, with the patrol. Yeah. Because we couldn't afford to wait. Yeah. Um. So, you know, uh, so like I say, it was out integrated. It was uh, a green jacket unit, actually. Two rifles in there now, um, and yeah, we're just plodding around, and then we can round. We're going to Al Fort, we're going to Al Kibla, which is for those who know Basra, is just just over the bridge as you come from the airport, mm. and um, and yeah, we we, we kind of knew we were a, a bit of a dodgy area we're going into, and, and but there were a bloke that were in, interested in um, having a conversation with, shall we say, um, yeah, and and I got hold of him, and obviously all his mates weren't happy about it, so it all kicked off, um. We calmed it all down. We went to pull out, and the Zero Bravo call sign didn't move. Uh oh. <laughs> Obviously, two four, two four Alpha. Can you help us out here? Yeah. So we go back in. Went back again, again. And then, and, and the insurgents realised what happened, and Turkey. So they're on the, again. they're on the sort of like aggressive now, straight away. Yeah, like, like, they're, they're bogged in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah not, great not chance. No happening here. So, and yeah, we kind of went. Yeah, yeah. We, we're towing. You know what I mean? So yeah. we got the kit hooked up um and i knew there was stuff landing around me you know what i mean and the other lad you know you could tell there was like little shard kicking yeah. up by his feet and that and he just didn't think about it so well, this is my job at the moment this, this is where my focus is this is what my job is yeah get this get, thing get out this of here done and yeah. then we'll do it after that. yeah and then like i said we got it hooked up we right everybody get in and i've like john wayne or something ran up front at warrior and jumped in the, the turret um, and, you know, to get into the weapon system. And then so the driver went, I can't see, you know. A lot of dust had kicked up, couldn't do an old, I don't know, 80,000 pounds worth of sighting system, I can't see through <laughs> yeah. Um So, yeah, head out the top, mark one eyeball. You're all right, just drive straight, go, go, go. And then, boom, felt the impact on the side of my head. So the bullet... Did you it, really feel it, did you? I mean, did oh, you yeah, get yeah, that yeah, proper I felt, smack? I felt, it just felt like I'd been punched. yeah. yeah. Um, like I say, bullet went in my left cheek. So if you imagine a line between your 
between your the, the left eye, outer left eye, and the left nostril. It kind of mm-hmm. went off. Yeah, left, left, it went in there, and it came out my right cheek. So again, imagine a line between your sort of nostril and the base yeah. of your ear, middle of that line. So at this stage, you're thinking, you know you've been hit, don't you? You know you've oh, been hit at this stage. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. now you're thinking, wow, well, what went through your mind? What, what you, what's you your... cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> Hit it. Hit it. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Majora broke in four flares with palate class. So I wasn't saying much, sort of, uh, yeah. sensibly. But, um, yeah, I kind of knew I'd been hit, you know what I mean? And, and I could feel my legs getting really hot, and it was where the blood was, was running onto my legs. Yeah. Um, I found out later I'd never have bled out because it, the, there's just not enough blood flow to your face. But yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, danger yeah. of suffocation. Um, did your your palate had gone presumably yeah, your, palate, jaw, your jaws yeah both cheekbones were disintegrated yeah. my palate broken uh, my jaw broke in four places and my palate collapsed what did you feel did you feel the pain did you did you, did I, you feel pain or, did, or had the I, adrenaline I, really kicked in by now well the adrenaline was there and that was what was keeping me there was a couple of things that went in my favour first of all the bullet did knock me out right okay if it had knocked me out I'd have been screwed um, yeah. because I just I'd have suffocated yeah um, the second thing that went in my favour was that I didn't realise how badly I'd been hurt. Right, yeah, I've, I've, I've spoken to a few people who've been so in a position. So I kind of gone. panic as much as I should have done. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then the third thing was, like you say, we, we, the reaction of the people around me and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so we, yeah, I kind of, I chucked the, the first field dress, I couldn't open it, so I chucked the first field dress into the guy back and he opened it up for me, passed it back through Yeah. so I could hold it on my At face. At this stage, how much could you actually see? That, that was it. I was, I, I couldn't see anything. Right, okay. But so now you're, you're in the capoda of this thing, yeah, floundering yeah. about, trying to get your kit sorted. Yeah, yeah and, but the thing was, I didn't realise that my eyes had been damaged. Okay, you just thought... It just... I've, I've, I've closed eyes shut, you yeah. know what I mean? Sort yeah. of thing. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't a thought that my eyes were damaged, it was a fact that, you know, I knew swelling was flat. Yeah. So again, I wasn't panicking about that side of stuff. Um, I just, like I said, my, my thought was, right, just, just get to medics. They can patch me up, couple of weeks chatting up nurses in hospital. <laughs> and then, you know, back on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back on the grind. Um yeah, I went wrong, obviously. Um yeah. but you know So you get you get you get you, did you continue you pulled this vehicle out, you continued back, you held your mouth open and all that sort of stuff, you you kept your airway alive. Yeah, so when what, you got back, did you go sort of like six straight away? I mean yeah, didn't, yeah, yeah. Didn't I first, had to go, had to go didn't get me two. your vehicle uh, I, I, had to go, I got my twos on so I could go on six parade. <laughs> yeah. Um no, uh, uh, yeah, like so so we um yeah, we got we got out of the killing zone. We got to a checkpoint, uh, and at that point, this checkpoint, the, the medic jumped on top. Yeah. So he was then feeding back information, so that the um, it was Basra Palace was the medical facility we were going yeah. to. So he was feeding back information, so they were ready for for what turned up. Uh, Anybody else hurt in the incident? Nobody else, no. Okay, no, just very, yourself. Very fortunate, yeah. Um, but uh, again, yeah, I've had a few stories back since, and apparently the vehicle was written off afterwards. It got that much abuse. Really. Um, my my driver, <laughs> he actually went the wrong way around the one way system, uh, <laughs> so the, the RSM came pounding across to give him a you know, give him, give him a tune in. <laughs> what are you doing driving the wrong way around my one way? <laughs> but the, yeah, the, 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 the driver, in no uncertain terms, um, informed him that he wasn't taking the long route. Um, yeah. Um, and obviously, when I got dragged, we you know, got dragged off the vehicle and stuff like yeah. that. It was kind of oh, yeah, be, yeah, kinda, yeah, straight away, yeah, yeah. We'll uh, we'll let that one go. <laughs> um, and at that point, but at this point, where's your headdress? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is the thing. So I was sat in the cupola, and they were chatting. You know, anyone knows a, a warrior Remy variant is quite a tight fit. Yeah. And they would how do we get him out? You know, I'm six foot three, at the time you know, seventeen, eighteen stone, a big lad. Yeah. Um, and it was like, well, how do we get him out? And I heard him talking. I just ripped my own body armor off and climbed out. Yeah. And at that point, it was a big cheer went up because all they'd heard is Sunray Two Four Alpha headshot. Wow. So they kind of, they'd ripped me off. And all of a yeah. sudden, you know, this bloke climbs out of the wagon. And it was like a big up yours to, to baddies. Yeah, you yeah. know, he, he's lived. I mean, a lot of people didn't think I'd make it home um, because of the damage, I thought, you know. And obviously there's no I, no way of knowing if there's any Were you in the damage. mindset that it was as bad as what it was? Or you were still thinking to yourself, I'll be all right here if I can get I back was, to the Until they knocked me out, I thought I was fine. Really? Okay. Yeah, um, and then they knocked me out and then... So they knocked you out? Yeah, drug induced coma for seventeen days. Okay, and wow, that's that a long time, isn't it? Yeah, and in that time, I was um, obviously I was back in the UK within forty eight hours. Okay, you don't know none of that, do you? So no. that, that's right. You, you you're on the yeah. back of a plane, you're on the meds, you're on yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, the only time I got a bed on a plane and I was unconscious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. um, 
but yeah, I like to say, I'm, I mean, obviously, my family again, a lot of this stuff is is, is anecdotal. It's what my family and friends have told me and things yeah. like that. And, and I mean, mum and dad said, you know, that we we were told to get us passports ready because I might not make it back to UK. Wow, I might have to go to Germany. Um, and then obviously, the pilot and the Merc team decided I'm going to get him all the way home. Uh, yeah. And so they obviously went down and they were ready for me at Birmingham. Okay. When I arrived so straight, straight to the hospital? Yeah, yeah. What are yeah. your memories of coming round out of that coma? So, ironically, I, I heard a lot while I was in the coma. I could okay. hear people, but I had no context to what was what I was hearing. Okay. Um, and so I kind of knew that things weren't right, but I didn't know or understand why or how. Yeah. So when I came round, I had a big metal frame on my face, and that didn't make sense. Um. Because I, I didn't, I don't know why that metal frame was on my I face. I mean, presumably you've put your hands up and gone, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah pretty much, that? yeah. That, I mean, that in its own, it must have been horrifying. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then when my mum explained that the frame was so far away from my face because that's as close to get it because of the swelling okay. when they actually fitted it. And then, and obviously, I'm trying to figure out, you know, I'd heard people talking about my eyes, but I didn't understand. And, and you don't want to believe them. You know, when when you get this these kind of bits of news, yeah, yeah, that eye's dead. Well, are you sure it's dead? You just don't want to believe him. You really? want to believe that you're going to be the the miracle that defies science. Yeah. Um. You know, you're and not. So at that moment when they actually told you the actual moment when they go, you ain't gonna see out of that again. Well, 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 the other one's knacked as well, isn't it? You know, what yeah. I mean? and at that time I only had light perception. Okay. So literally knew the lights were on or off, so like nothing else. What What are you thinking there? You must have been I, thinking. I, I felt cheated. But you've been robbed. Yep, I thought I've done it. I did everything right. Yeah, I did. I did. You know, I held my nerve. I did everything right. I completed the mission, and this is this is my reward. Mm. And what, what's all that about? And I just felt absolutely cheated. I, I suppose much. at this stage now, you know, there's there's nothing you can really do about it at that 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 time. You've, you've got what you got. Yeah, and, and and all I could think about was everything I'd lost. Mm. That, that everything was about what I'd lost, what had been taken from me. I, I'll be honest with you, mate. I just can't even imagine somebody going, you know, you've seen all your life, and all of a sudden you're going, yeah. I might not ever see that again. All the things that must have gone yeah. through your head. What was what was the worst thing that you were going to now think, I ain't going to do that again? It wasn't about that. It was about, <laughs> again, it was thinking about what I had in All I could imagine was I was now a disabled person who was going to live in my, spare, my mum and dad's spare room for the rest of my life. Really, and that, that was what that, that, was... that that's what I thought my future held for me, and as you can imagine, I didn't want I didn't want that future. No, I bet you um, were devastated. And I, and I, I, I worked out how to kill myself. You, you got those dark thoughts. You you, oh, you, went, you got went, to that edge, and you went. I went there. Tell you what, first I chance. Yeah. I went there, and and I got to the edge, um, and then well, I don't know whether I was brave or or afraid, but I didn't do it, um, and then and then I found out a couple of lads had been killed. And it it was a massive switch moment, all of a sudden. To say it could have been actually worse. Yeah, you, you, all of a sudden I went from being a victim to a survivor. Wow, that's that's it, cool. that. Look, I always like to try and look for positives and negatives. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And, and you know, you, you've you've gone for a massive negative, and you've just absolutely pulled a positive out. You're that far up the ladder, but it's that far up the ladder, yeah, isn't it? Do you know I'm what I mean? I'm still on the ladder. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and that yeah. was it. That that moment that I found out these people weren't coming home. You know, and it's not Put just a different perspective. It's not it. just a poppy. You know, this is these are names, these are people, these yeah. are I knew their their girlfriends, I knew their family, I knew you know and it's kind of yeah, you need to stop talking here, Brown, because at least So you had a bit of a come to Jesus with yourself, a bit of a yeah, sort yourself yeah. out son. Yeah, and, and that that was the moment I decided, you know what, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna have a go at this. I'm gonna get up, I'm not gonna give up. Uh and you know and every every moment, every challenge since then has kind of that. That's been the question: What are you going to do? You're going to get up, or you're going to give up? Yeah. And and that's that's the way now that I live my life. You know, I, I can't change yesterday. I can't stop no, tomorrow. No, they're, they're, they're the things you can't do anything about, aren't they? Yeah. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. So all, you, all, all you can yeah. all you can do is get involved in today. And so talk about the day. What operation wise? You've you've obviously had a fair amount of reconstruction on your face and all that sort of stuff. How much can you see? So yeah, so it's um, it's twenty five percent. I think is the official figure. Um, so it's like looking through frosted glass or okay. opening your eyes underwater. Yeah, it's very very like foggy and and things like that. And and it can be affected by how tired I am, uh, atmospheric sort yeah. of stuff. Uh, there's lots of different things, but there's there's enough there to work with. Okay, you know what I mean. So yeah, I can do certain things, and obviously there's adaptive technology out there now. That means so now you're clawing stuff back, aren't you? 
Yeah, yeah. From I mean, sort of like being that low, you, you're, you're now clawing it back, aren't you? Well, like you say, it's, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's coming on 16 years, 17 years since the injury. Wow, that's a that's a long time. And, and as you can imagine, the first 10 years was, was limbo because that was surgery, uh, you know, 25 operations, 140 hours of surgery. Did you almost get used to having operations? Did I got sick of it, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, you, kind of, God, just, just, you just felt like you were never going to get to the end. Yeah. And... Um, and you just like battles of fours, battles of fours, and because it's not just the operations, it's in the, it's in the outpatients, and then you got to go off to consultation for the next one, and then the yeah, yeah, it's, it's not just a case of right lie down there, so there we go, yeah, that's some yeah. of that. It's, it's the whole rigmarole, yeah. and, and and you, you just feel like you can't you can't plan anything, you can't do anything, you kind of just gotta, you know, you just got you're just waiting by the phone for the next sort of appointment, and and it, yeah, for ten years it's kind of. And yes, that's what you're, you're, you're almost dependent on other people for those appointments and all that sort of stuff. So you must have felt proper out of control of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, and how did you cope with that? I had to. I just had to learn to adapt. You know right. what I mean? And I think I think the first thing I did, which which really was a, a massive stepping stone, was was you know, Blind Veterans UK, which is St Dunstan's. Uh, I got in touch with them, and you know, I, I didn't hold much hope for what they might be able to do. But what they did was they introduced me to other guys who'd been through stuff. Okay. And it kind of knocked down loads of barriers for me because a lot of the things I thought I couldn't do or things I thought I'd struggle with, yeah. I found out other folk had been doing it. And I thought, well, if they can do it, yeah, I'm gonna have it's a, only me I'm stopping on me. Yeah. Um, and like I said, so I got on with that and, and like I said, I got the education. And I think what it was is I then accepted my new reality. And I kind of thought, well, this is it. So, you know, there's no point hoping for something better let's just get on with what i got and see what happens and, and by accepting it i kind of i was able then to you know start taking more risks start start trying new things um because i knew that i you know it's a new learning process to relearn to do so many new things mm. because i had to do it in a different way and we're just getting dressed in the morning yeah. all that sort of stuff it's all it's just it's you're almost getting the sort of like there you go right now you've got to go that way <laughs> just, i mean I, I remember i remember when i went home i, I bought a house within Sort of seven months, thanks to you know, conversation that yeah. seven months of getting injured because I just had to move out with my parents, so I was going to kill them. I loved them a bit, but yeah, you know, when, when you got your mum going, but you'd oh, also made up your own mind, you didn't want to be that guy stuck in the back yeah, bedroom, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah so, 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 so I was looking, I was looking for somewhere to live, and yeah. you know, and I got somewhere, but <laughs> I remember, I remember in the kitchen making a cup of tea, and my mum came up and sort of knocked me out of the way and says, Oh, careful, you might scold yourself. I think I've just been shot in the head, it's a bit late, I've been doing my get with the program, mum. <laughs> uh, so, the charity stuff you started doing, a, you, you help with the heroes, helped you out, I'll, I'll take it, yeah, I worked, I was there the early days with them and and um like you say that what that did i think it gave a platform for us to share our stories and and and, and tell the public we didn't want sympathy we wanted opportunity you, yeah, know? you did that incredible interview with that little girl that was someone else yeah, I'm, like, I'm, temper, I'm, yeah. I'm like oh <laughs> lump in my throat like watching that and and that was the thing like saying and that was what it was all about it was about making people realize that you know Yes, we do do a tough job in the military, and there, there are bits of our job that you don't want to know about. Yeah, but we're still people. Yeah, you know, what I mean, we still we still want to remote with the rest of the world. We still want to be engaged, and and we don't want to be you know that Fourth of July syndrome. You know, you don't know you weren't there. No, I will tell you what yeah. it's like if you want to listen. Yeah, um, and I think that that help for heroes enabled that dialogue. Okay, so uh, you felt that you could, you had somewhere now, uh, yeah, yeah. not so much a platform, but somewhere you could actually go and go. I'll tell you what. Yeah, let's get this out. Yeah, did, did you find it, it with with the PTSD stuff? Did you find that was helping you talking about it, getting in the open? Yeah, yeah. I, like you said, I, work, I worked with a really good bloke, and, and one of the things was like I said, you know, once you've got a label on something, you can actually start to work with it because yeah. you, you catalyst, find out what your catalyst moment is, and then you work out your coping strategies, and you work out your triggers, and all that side of it. And, and actually, yeah, speaking about it because the more you talk about stuff, the more you realise actually, I didn't control that. And if I didn't control it, then it wasn't my fault. Yeah. <laughs> and but you also learn what you do control. And by having that, if I say I control that, that gives me the power to change it. Yeah. And and, and that's so you've owned it, but you did take ownership of it, haven't you? Yeah, totally. Yeah. You know what I mean? And 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 that was the thing. By by being like that, it gave me the opportunity to then say, you know what, this is what I want to change. This is what I want. To, this is what I can't change. And this is what I can. So you know, and, and that helps massively. And and then you know. I think just becoming comfortable in my own skin and just you yeah. know accepting who I am and what I am and 
and actually not being ashamed of any of it. No, you know? Nothing to be ashamed of at all. From, from, none none from of us are, but I think, I think some of us, you know, deep down, we, we kind of, we know we sacrifice a little bit of who yeah. we are for the job we do. And, and sometimes we, we harbour a little bit of guilt about that, and we shouldn't. No, you shouldn't, no. And, and you know, anybody, anyone out there in the military, who's, 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 you've done what you were asked to do, and yeah. you've done it in a professional manner. You can be proud of who you are, yeah. because if it wasn't you doing it, it might have been someone who was, you know, who was A, less versatile, and A, probably didn't do it in a professional manner you did. Yeah. Um, That's an incredible outlet you've got there. Do you know what I mean? I think you, you, your mindset is proper... I'm, I'm so I'm, 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 I'm massively impressed with your mindset. It's, it's, it's really it's inspirational, to be honest. It, it, and like I said, I'd, I'd had to learn. Yeah. And I've had a lot of time to sit and think about stuff. But yeah, I had to learn, and, and I did a lot of stuff around that to help myself, you know. And I've been able to use that to help others. And I work, you know, I work quite close with Leeds Rhinos Foundation now, as well as working with blind veterans, and, and I work around their mental health program uh, okay. with men. And 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 it is, it's going out. And, just letting people, right? Be who you are, but talk to people. You know that you. Yeah, shouldn't. I think you've got to let you, you've got to you've got to explain to people who you are, what you are, and all that sort of stuff. And that that's that again. That's you know other other doors have opened, other opportunities have come about. And, and what's, that, what's your plans now? What's in your world now? What are you actually doing now? What's so I I work for Blind Veterans UK. I work okay. with an engagement team, uh, so okay. I do a lot of stuff with external agencies. So that whether that's supporters fundraisers okay do you mentor other people that have, that have and, sort of yeah we, we, we've kind of had that within the beneficiary ranks anyway that okay. we, we, we line people up and mentor um i'm also a qualified rugby coach uh okay. so i i coach the disabled team uh okay. at leeds rhinos we won the title last year so you kind of you know something else to sort of uh swing do along you get involved with invictus at all i don't do much with invictus no i, I think when the invictus came around i was kind of in a good enough place, not to need to not to need it, because Invictus is a great opportunity to, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to you know platform yourself to the next thing. Yeah. But I'd already but you already leads rhinos. Yeah, I mean, you're I play, out there. Well, I played for the the disabled team for four years. Okay, you know what I mean, and and I got I got that competitive sport bug out my system. Yeah, and then I thought, well, I want to stay around, so that's why I went into the coaching role. Yeah, um, like you say, and then, and I just enjoy that sort of stuff, and <laughs> I've even. Like a divvy. Um, I've started, uh, I, I got involved in local politics, a local councillor. Found myself, you know, okay. deputy mayor in my local town. Uh, <laughs> I'm the all... sheriff around here. <laughs> <laughs> Back in your box. Um, <laughs> but, but again, it's kind of, it was interesting because obviously, you know, you go through the selection process and election process and, yeah. and obviously you find yourself, you think, people respect me. Hey, massively. And, massively. And, and, but it's not just, what I did yesterday, the respect for what I'm doing today. That's exactly what I was going to come to, mate. You you are doing some incredible stuff. You you must see it now. Do you know what I mean? I think. Do you know what I mean? Because you I, do. You start to you start that, to understand and you start to reflect. And, and that gives you a that gives you responsibilities as well, doesn't it? You know, you're you, you're now doing stuff which actually has given you a place in society which you probably thought was never going to be open to you. Yeah, and you know, you think you know that day, I thought my life ended. Yeah, actually. It opened up the, the things I've done and achieved. I would never have done. So for for whatever reason, when you were sat on that that, <laughs> that last precipice, thinking right, I'm going to pop smoke and tap out here. Yeah. Actually, if you'd have done that, think about what you wouldn't have achieved. Think about the people that you wouldn't have helped. Yeah. Yeah. And that's an incredible story. Well, the other thing as well, I think when I when I got injured, it was a time when there was a lot of people getting injured. You yeah. Know, 2006, seven, eight, nine period. Um, and I had the opportunity to be around some incredible people. You know, one of, your, one of your other guests, Mark Armour, I had the chance to Mark's, meet him. Mark's talk, a tremendous guy. And I got tremendous to, mindset. And I, yeah, and I've spoke to him, and you know, and you, you listen to people like him, and I sit in a room with him, at least I'm not in that condition. Yeah. And, and I know for a fact Mark sits in a room and looks at other people, at least I'm not in that condition. <laughs> that, that's his, that's <laughs> yeah. his mindset, isn't it? But I was around lots of people like that. There were, yeah. there, there's so many others out there who, you know, and to be around that positive energy through adversity, it yeah. kind of, you, you, you had no choice, it rubbed off. You know, and then you found yourself you haven't, got a, you haven't got a single drop of self-pity in you, have you? Not a single drop, have no. you? You're like, no, I'll tell you what, mate, <laughs> sod that. I'm, I'm, for the, I'm, for the, I'm for the going forward. Hey, well, this, this is the thing. You've got, like I say, get up or give up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you, you can't enjoy life sitting on the sideline. You know, you've got to be on the pitch. Yeah, of course. Mate, honestly, I, I, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm almost speechless with this. I, I, just your whole attitude and the way that you convey yourself 
is on another level, a level that hopefully most people will never have to understand because obviously what you've been through to get to where you are, insane. Yeah, and, and, and I'll take me out after, you know. What, what I'll always say, people in the military, you know, it's not just the ones that got it or the ones that didn't come home. You know, a lot of people got missed. Yeah, I don't make them any less of an of an inspiring and special individual. Yeah, no, no, no. I I, I totally get it. Yeah, yeah. No, right, right. Listen, you got to promise me, Sam. Right, you got to promise that you will come back on the show. You will keep us abreast of the the projects that you're involved in and the charities and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Can you promise me that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I would, well, love, you, I would love mate, to see mate, you again. Mate, you, you drop a text any time. And, and maybe at some stage of the campaign, I'll come up and see you up there, and you know, maybe come and see what you're up to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I say, as, as long as there's a, as long as there's tea in the pot, we're, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, you're incredible, my friend. Lovely to meet you, mate. Great to see you. Honestly, Stay genuine, brother. Superb.